Greetings, Bannister Road Baptist Church. Uh, welcome to anyone else who may be tuning in for the first time. My name is Sean Moore, and we would like to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to minister God's word to you today. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, speaking on the subject of getting ready to serve. Getting ready to serve. Uh, before I do that, let me let me tell you what I was doing a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, I decided that I was going to make a homemade pizza. And with making this homemade pizza, I'm in there putting the dough together. And all of a sudden, I look at my hands, and my hands are all sticky. The dough is all sticking to my hands. So I look at my wife and say, hey, can you read the instructions and um, see if there's something that I'm missing? And she, after she read the instructions, yes, I was supposed to put a little olive oil in the bowl. So with me putting a little olive oil in the bowl, now I can do the dough and the dough isn't sticking to my hands. I thought to myself, to make this pizza, I have all these little steps just to get this dough ready. They, they told me after I had massage the dough that I needed to put it in a bowl and uh, after I put the dough in a bowl I had to put a towel on top and let it sit for a little while before it was ready. The same is true concerning um, people getting ready to serve God. We don't want to read the instructions and just so you know the instructions is the word of God. I tried to do the pizza dough without reading the instructions. We try to live the Christian life. We try to serve God without reading the instructions but if we read the instructions we have a, a clearer understanding of what it is that we ought to be doing but not only do we not like to read the instructions we like to bypass the steps the little steps that god has for us to get ready for the purpose that he has saved us which is to bring him ultimately all the glory that we possibly can so today I want to give you three insights from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, that will help us to get ready to serve God. And these three points are not just for beginners, but these three points will help those of us who have been serving God for an extended amount of time and, and may have lost sight of the goal or have gotten distracted along the way. So let me give you these three points. Number one, getting ready to serve God, Isaiah had the right view of God. Isaiah had the right view of God. That's number one. Number two, Isaiah had the right view of himself. And number three, Isaiah had the right view of the mission. Isaiah chapter six and verse one, the Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings with twain. He covered his face and his twain. He covered his feet and his twain. He did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. And then Isaiah said, Woe is me. For I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. Isaiah had the right view of God. He had the right view of himself and he had the right view of the mission. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you for this day and pray that you will bless us uh, right now through the teaching and the hearing of your word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. This text starts with a vision. Isaiah's vision was not just about him. In Isaiah 6 and verse 5, Isaiah starts off, he says, woe is me. But he continues to say that he dwells in the midst of a people of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Isaiah chapter 5, Isaiah went to woe in the people. Woe meant a condition of deep suffering from affliction or grief. Isaiah chapter 5, if you go through, if you go back over Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8, you'll see woe unto them. Isaiah 
5 verse 11, you'll see woe unto them. Isaiah 5 verse 18, you'll see woe unto them. Isaiah uh, 5 verse 20, woe unto them. Verse 21, woe unto them. I love verse 20 because he says, woe unto them that call good. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Man, that is, that, that's where we are today in this world. People say that which is good is, is evil and that which is evil is good. <sighs> Isaiah back in the day said, whoa. And it's, it's, it, who, who's to say that the Bible isn't relevant for today? Because the same thing that the prophet Isaiah was talking about, we're dealing with it today. If you, if you, you got to go back and read Isaiah chapter five for yourself. Here in, in, in chapter six, he says, woe with me. Isaiah's message and ministry was primarily to the southern kingdom of Judah. Isaiah ministered during the time of Ahaz, uh, Uzziah, and Hezekiah. He ministered alongside the prophet Hosea. Isaiah prophesied about the coming Messiah more than any other prophet. But his main message, message was that judgment was coming for the nation of Judah because of their sins. Now, let me give you something to think about. Let me give you something to think about. God uses a sinful man as his voice to pronounce judgment upon his sinful people. Don't be surprised when God uses us to confront other sinners about their sins. If the criteria to be used by God was perfection, who would qualify? God uses imperfect people to confront imperfect people about their need of the perfect one. <laughs> Getting ready to serve God. How do we get ready to serve God? First, we must have the right view of God. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1, Isaiah said he saw the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up. Having the right perspective of God will strike a particular response. And here you see the, the, in verse 3, the response was holy, holy, holy worship. When you have the right viewpoint of God, you can't help but worship him because you understand that he is worthy and he alone is worthy of all praise. See, we have a problem in the world that we live in today. People have the wrong viewpoint of God. We worship man. We worship the creator more. We worship the creature more than the creator. Let me tell you something. God is not our dude. God is not the man upstairs. God is not our homeboy. Isaiah saw God sitting upon the throne. A throne represents royalty. Royalty demands respect. There is no queen of England, but there is a queen of UK, and her name is Queen Elizabeth. If you ever get the opportunity to meet her, there is a correct formal address. You have to approach her and call her your majesty. And after you say your majesty, the next thing that comes after that would be ma'am. The next thing that's followed up with is ma'am. Or you would say your highness. If you would have the privilege to have dinner with her, you had to dress. You have to dress a certain way. And if you come face to face with her and shake her hand, it's, it's the respectful thing to take a slight bow. You can shake her hand, but watch this. After you shake her hand, you can't even touch her anymore, not even accidentally. Now watch this. You got to hear what I'm saying. Here we have all these rules and regulations to be able to spend time in the presence of royalty, the queen. And yet people want to preach this day today that God, we bring God down to our level and say that we can approach God any kind of way. If you look at the Old Testament, you see that God had certain stipulations about the, the, uh, sacrifices that were brought to him. You couldn't just bring him any sacrifice, but today we teach you can just come to God any kind of way. If, if that was true, think about it. You can't even approach royalty down here on earth like that. So how in the world did we, did we get to the point that we can just come and approach God any kind of way? How did we get there? Because our viewpoint of God is not right. 
people don't respect God like they should. Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. People just don't fear God anymore like they should. Isaiah 5, verse 8 through 9, God says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And man has to understand, God doesn't think like we think. See, Isaiah saw God, and, and he saw the holy host, the, the heavenly host crying out, holy, holy, holy. Do you know that God is holy? God is not like us. Holiness means uh, morally pure and set apart from all sin. God is not like us. If, if we're honest, we struggle with sin. God doesn't struggle with sin. We need to be careful with how we view God. We need a biblical viewpoint of who God is. No, nothing and no one can compare to God. When we read the Bible, we, have, we need to have a theocracy mindset. What is this passage teaching us about God? How we see God will help us to get ready to serve him. See, TV, social media, our own sinful ways has messed up our thought process or our viewpoint of God. The right viewpoint of God will lead us to the conclusion that God is the creator of all things. Therefore, we should act like he is our master. Jeremiah 18, 6, God told the house of Israel, he said, cannot I do with you as the potter does with the clay, says the Lord. Behold, the clay is in the potter's hand. So are ye in my hand, O Israel. God said, I'm trying to do something with you. But listen to what Israel said. Israel said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. And we will, everyone do the imagination of the evil of our hearts. The problem with man today is man's not really trying to serve God. What man is trying to do is do his own thing and then make it look like he's about God's agenda. See, to get ready to serve God, we must have the right viewpoint of God. But we must also have the right viewpoint of ourselves. Now, this is a difficult one for us. Because Isaiah 6, 5, Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. To be unclean, to be defiled, uh, we say unclean? Who? Me? <laughs> no, no. Now let's be honest. What do we do with unclean dishes? What do we do with them? What do we do with unclean dishes? See, man, because of his pride, doesn't like to admit that he's dirty. See, Titus 3, 5 says, We are saved not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see the word washing? Ephesians 5, 26, verse 27 says that he might sanctify and cleanse us, talking about the church, with the washing of water by the word, talking about the word of God. We need to be washed through the word of God. The word of God will help us to be clean. And the goal is that God might present uh, to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it may be holy and without blemish. God desires that we will be holy because he is holy. Let's be honest. We fall short sometimes. Before we can get ready to serve God, we need to have the right viewpoint of ourselves. We must uh, be honest and be willing to recognize that without Jesus, we have no hope. Ephesians 2 verse 12 verse 14 through 14 says that at the time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ for he is our peace 
who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Do an honest inventory of your failures. Be honest about your sins. Be honest about your thoughts. Be honest about the places you go. Be honest about the things that you look at. Be honest about the words that come out of your mouth. Be honest. I, I, I love what Peter said when he was on the boat with Jesus in Luke chapter 5 and verse 8. Let me, I think it's Luke chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, he said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And this happened after Jesus, the miracles of the fishes. You have to read this for yourself, Luke chapter 5, when the miracle of Jesus bringing the fishes into the boat. But when, when Peter had the right viewpoint of Jesus, he said, oh, Lord, I'm a sinful man. We are so prideful because what we say is that I'm not that sinful. I'm a good person. And what the problem is, we're comparing ourselves with other people. But the Bible has told us that we are unwise. In Corinthians, it talks about you're unwise when you compare yourself with other people. The comparison for us should always be to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, when we compare ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, we always fall short. We will always come to the conclusion that we are sinful. I, 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 I'm not perfect. But when we compare ourselves to other people, if I compare myself to other people, I'm just playing. If we, <laughs> if we compare ourselves to other people, we can find 10, 20, 30 people, 40, 50 people that we're doing better than. But see, that's the problem. To have the right viewpoint of ourselves, we have to have the right viewpoint of God. Because the more we learn about God, the more we see the imperfections in our own lives. We need to stay in the mirror so that we can see ourselves for who we really are. Let's be honest. We don't just mess up sometimes. We sin. Sin is missing the mark. Sin separates us from God. The Bible will keep us from sin or sin will keep us from the Bible. This book is our mirror. The more you stay in this book, the more we realize that we have a lot more work to do. And really not us, but letting God through the Holy Spirit, through the person of the Holy Spirit, has a lot of work to do inside of us to make us more like Christ. If we say that we have fellowship with God and we walk in darkness, we lie. The truth is not in, in us. That's what 1 John says. 1 John said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. What I love the most is that if we confess our sin, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah's sermon centered on the holiness of God and God's desire to save mankind from their sins. Isaiah 12 verse 2 said, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is also become my salvation. The way to receive salvation from God is through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.22 says, But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith, of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Jesus Christ is the only way that we can be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 4 through 5 says, It is God's desire to have all men saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. When we have the right viewpoint about God, we will have the right view about ourselves. When we have the right view about ourselves, we will have the right view about the mission. Isaiah's mission was similar to ours. Isaiah was called to confront other sinners about their sins. Isaiah charged Israel with making some horrible choices. 
is God still in the business of calling people to confront people about their sins and the horrible choices that they're making in this world? Yes, he is. Don't miss this. In Isaiah 6 and verse 6 and 7, this is so important. Verse 6 says, when I, after Isaiah said, woe is me, I'm unclean. Verse 6 says, then flew one of the seraphims unto him having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And verse 7 says he laid it upon uh, Isaiah's mouth and this, he touched his lips and he said, thy iniquity is taken away and thy sins is purged. This is important. Before God used Isaiah to confront anyone else about their sins, God did a work in Isaiah's life first before he could use him. That is important. Isaiah needed to experience forgiveness before he could confront anyone else about their sins. Forgiveness is available to all. After forgiveness, after being forgiven, then are we ready to serve? See, this is our hope that our iniquities can be taken away, that our sins can be forgiven and having hope of a changed life. See, once you give your life to Christ, your life should not stay the same. In Ephesians 5 verses 1 through 5, he said, be ye followers. This is Paul. He says, be ye followers of God as dear children. Why does he use that example? Because children just follow. They just trust. And that's how we need to follow God. We need to just trust them. And then he says, you need to walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. He says, watch this. He says, but fornication, see, this is our problem today. We don't want to, we don't want to get to live in this Christian life. He says, but fornication, all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. There should be something different about you. He said, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather what should be coming out of our mouth is thanks. Every day we should be giving God thanks for this. Ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean, hear that word again, unclean person, nor covetous man, nor idolater, any of that such manner will inherit the kingdom of God. For us, the mission hasn't changed. We are to share the gospel message with as many people as we possibly can, giving them the chance to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is a loving God and God is ready to pardon our sins. All we have to do is believe and repent and put our trust in Jesus Christ. We will never get involved with the mission if we don't view God properly. If you wonder why you're not concerned about uh, other people spending eternity in hell because you don't have the right viewpoint of God. When we have the right viewpoint of God, we will have the right viewpoint of ourselves. When we have the right viewpoint of ourselves, then we will get involved with the mission. The question is, do you view yourself as a person that needs the grace of God? We should. God has work for us to do. And he is still asking the question that Isaiah heard. In verse 8, listen to what Isaiah heard. Isaiah said, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? God is still in the sending business. Listen to what he said. He said, I heard a voice saying, Whom shall I send? And, and who will go for us? I like Isaiah's attitude, Isaiah said, I, here am I, send me. See, God says, go and tell. Whom shall I send? It is our responsibility to say, send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Now, let me ask you something. Do you need to recommit yourself to the mission that God has given you today? Has, 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 has God told you to go somewhere and you have refused to go? <sighs> Are you willing to do what God is asking you to do? Don't be like Isaiah because I, Isaiah, you can be like Isaiah in, in the part of send me, but don't be like Isaiah in verse 11 because verse 11, Isaiah said, how long? <laughs> 
He said, like, Isaiah said, how long I got to go? God said, don't worry about how long. We don't need to worry about how long. You need to serve until you can't serve anymore. That means there's no age limit. Amen. Serve wherever God says go. Serve in whatever position God gives you. Let me leave you with a few things to think about. We need to listen for God's instructions and volunteer to go where he leads. We need to be listening for God's instructions and volunteer to, volunteer to go wherever he leads. We need to be like Isaiah and acknowledge our sinfulness before God. Learn to confess your sins. Ask God to blot them out. Don't hide. Don't cover your sins up. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself about your struggles and your failures and, and depend on the grace of God to be with you until you become strong enough. The word of God says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All of our strength comes from him. That takes time to, to develop muscles. You get on the, you get like, if you're ever going to be like me and strong, you got to put in work. I'm on the bench. Some days it hurt. I'm, I'm hitting the weights. You don't get strong like this without putting in work. And the same thing in the Christian life. You cannot get strong enough to have victory over sin without allowing God to do a work in you. Trust the grace of God. Ask God to forgive you. Be honest that you need help. Don't rationalize. Do what God has asked you to do. The song says that obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. <laughs> Most people are not listening and cannot understand what God is saying to them about life. If I could encourage you to do anything, listen. Listen when the word of God is being taught. Listen when you're reading your word. We need to have the right view about God. If I could encourage you, read your Bible with the mindset of learning as much about God as you possibly can. We need to have the right view about ourselves. Let's be honest. We all need Jesus. We all need to be forgiven. And we need to have the right view about the mission. The mission isn't for someone else. The mission is for us. We need to be like Isaiah. Isaiah said, I heard a voice say, who will I send? And Isaiah says, send me. We don't want to say, leave that responsibility up to someone else to tell, tell somebody about Jesus. No, we need to get involved. This world needs Christians right now to take a stand. But the problem with us in, in, in the church right now is that we didn't, we're not doing what Isaiah. Isaiah had the right viewpoint of God and then Isaiah had the right viewpoint about himself. We need the right viewpoint about ourselves before we can actually be ready to get involved in the mission because we have too many Christians thinking more highly of themselves than, than we ought to think. We ought to be like Paul. We are who we are by the grace of God. Let's be honest with people. We, we mess up sometimes. We, we're not perfect. We're trying to be. No excuses for sin. No excuses. But we, 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 we have a sin nature. We got to be honest about that. And when we do that, this is the mindset that we need when it comes to getting ready to serve God. So I'm asking you, are you ready to serve God? Are you getting ready to serve God? What attitude do you have? while you're trying to serve God. Is your viewpoint about God correct today? You need to keep learning as much as you can about God and keep learning as much as you can about yourself and be honest about it and then get involved and help this, th these people out here in this world. These people are lost. As we look at what's going on in our world today, we can see that people lack the wisdom of God. People lack the wisdom of God. They need the wisdom of God. And the Bible says, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge. You and I, you and I are called to disperse knowledge to this world that we're living in. I'm asking you to get ready to serve God. Get ready. And if you're already serving God, use this lesson as a reminder 
of what we need to do to complete the mission that God has started in our life whenever that mission started. Just know that I love you. I'm praying for you. Y'all stay safe. God bless you.